Hello, this is gonna be my last video in this setup because I'm moving next week, which is a little bit scary. I'm excited. Today though, we're doing a different video. We're doing how I work as a full-time creator. I only have a thousand followers on Instagram, exhibit A, 4,000 on TikTok. I think I've got like 2,000 something on YouTube. So I'm not big, I'm not big time yet. I actually work full time as a creator and I do a couple of other things on the side. So if you want to be a creator in 2024, 2025, 2026, whatever year it is, maybe this video can help you out a little bit. So first of all, I'll tell you a bit about me. So I'm actually a freelancer. So I kind of pick and choose my work. I don't have a regular set job that I continuously go back to. And as a freelancer, I do content creation for myself. I do content creation for a TikTok shop company, UGC creation for brands, affiliate marketing, I model. And I'm an actor as well so those are my six <laughs> different career pathways and funnily enough I study music and that doesn't really come in there at all the main thing that's taking up my time right now is I work as a part-time creator three days a week which is really chill actually it's really nice and it's just nice to have that steady income but what I get paid is a lot lower than what I would get paid if I reached out to brands specifically for myself which is why I kind of do the others as well I like this way of work because I love being really really busy and then really really quiet I would hate to do the same thing every single day so it's kind of figuring out what works for you if you are a creative then you're probably the same as me you like to have a bit more flexibility kind of choose your hours so that's why I love being a creator so I'll kind of get into all of them a bit later on but first things first how can you be a creator with 1,000 followers or less first thing I did to start working with brands is obviously you have to post if you do not have a social media presence then I don't know how you expect to be a content creator so make sure none of your profiles are private make sure you're consistently posting but we'll get into that later on just make sure you have some profile set up and you do post make sure they're in the business account if a brand does come across your page they know you're on there right now it's not like the last post was November 2022 so once you're posting once you're being consistent I actually started using apps to start working with brands so I know there's quite a few my favorite is Unitasker or Shout that's how I got started I still do them on Unitasker and Shout today so there's also quite a few more I know there's Coley, Brands Meet Creators, Influi is that how you say it if I can think of them I will link them below because there's absolutely loads a bunch of different apps you can use and you basically just sign up and then you can start applying for jobs or they reach out to you unitasker they all come up on like the main page and then you can click apply so that's definitely one of my faves check them out love them loads as well great team another thing is when you do get that sponsored video brands will actually run ads behind it promoting your video which not only drives more traffic to that post but also to your page helping you grow your account i actually did an ad for unitasker and it got like eight mil it drove people to my page every single day I was going on I had 99 plus profile visits like it is a great way to get more exposure so yeah even if the pay isn't great at first definitely start doing that because you do need to have practice as well if you do want to go off and kind of take things into your own hands later down the line where you're then pitching to brands start the easy way maybe start with the apps build up that portfolio build up that confidence and go from there interjecting really quick because I did forget to talk about what to do when you actually do start pitching to brands so first of all, like I said, you want to build up your portfolio. So you want to have a collection of all these different videos. You want to have things like unboxings to get ready with me. So you want to have aesthetic content. There's plenty of examples on TikTok, YouTube, wherever. So they'll be good to check out if you do want to start building your portfolio. And then you also want to make sure you know your rates. So I've put my rates on the screen now. These are standard. In fact, these are actually below the average rate. I put these because I'm also just still trying to get the hang of things even though this has been my job but yeah and then you can start pitching to emails i use chat gbt to help me out a little bit as well like i ask it to give me a template and then i kind of change things from there as well just so i can send more emails in a day and then i always link my portfolio at the bottom again there's loads on instagram which is very very helpful about pitching to brands on ugc when you pitch to brands don't be disheartened if they don't respond not all of them will not all of them need any more keep pitching keep applying and keep correcting any errors that you might think down the line is what's causing you to not get as many deals literally on instagram there's so many brand emails that you can reach out to people have leaked them on twitter as well like they are everywhere so 
you can find them. Hope that helps. Don't know why I forgot to mention that whole point, but that is a big help in my career. It helps the money come in and the money's good, which is why I love UGC. Another thing is don't be afraid to tag and reach out to brands. Not many people tag brands in their posts if it's not paid content. For example, Super Dry used to send me stuff and I would always tag Super Dry and then it would feel a bit weird if I posted a photo with an Urban Outfitters jumper on because Urban Outfitters didn't send me the jumper but Super Dry sent me the clothes so surely Super Dry should get the shout out. But realistically they don't care. If you want to work with brands in the future, you need to show that you are going to create authentic content for them. Therefore, you need to show that you wear their clothes or use their makeup or use their products. Tag your brands, not just in posts. A great way to do this is on stories as well. If you don't want your friends to know you're tagging them, you can literally take a photo, post it on your story, tag them, make it really, 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 really tiny and put it in like the top corner or something. Just be tagging brands so that they will start to notice you. Another thing that I very briefly touched on earlier was to be consistent. Obviously, there's so many different social media platforms now, so I would pick three main ones to be consistent on. And then if you wanna use the others, I would say just kind of do it for the versatility. I believe that's the right word, versatility. For example, my three main social media platforms are Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. So I post weekly on YouTube. I post God knows how many times a week on TikTok. Sometimes it's twice a day, sometimes it's once every two days, but it's always like five times a week, unless I'm just having an off week. And Instagram, I just try and post as regularly as possible, especially if it's branded content. And if it's not gonna be an actual post, I'll post stories, etc. But I've also just started posting regularly on Pinterest. So I post at least three pins a day on Pinterest. I post on Lemonade whenever I can. I don't use Twitter, I don't use Facebook, but if you wanna use them, Twitter is also a great way to actually reach out to brands. So I do need to start using that one soon. Yeah, I'd say have three main ones that you really wanna focus on and put all your energy into. And out of those three, if three is too much, maybe start with two, start with one, just until you're in the swing of things and being consistent is good but being consistent doesn't mean anything if you don't have a niche you need to have a niche to push your content to the right people so that you can grow an audience if you one day post a video on how to fix a car and then the next day you're doing a makeup routine and then the day after that cooking my fiance her favorite meal it doesn't it doesn't doesn't really coincide. So I say pick a niche. You can have different ones for different platforms. For example, my niche on Pinterest is coffee. <laughs> it's literally coffee and like kitchen decor. It's very specific, whereas Instagram is fashion. TikTok is lifestyle and YouTube. YouTube is like uni, but that's not a niche, but you know, it's like uni orientated. I don't know. So you can have different niches on different platforms. I would say be consistent in your niche on that particular platform. And then again, when your audience starts to grow, they will go from your YouTube channel to your Instagram to your TikTok, and then they will know all the different things you do. And that's when you can kind of start bringing them all together. For now though, I would say just stick to a niche just so the algorithm can get going and you can have the correct audience watching your content. Another thing which I think is so, 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 so important and people don't really pay attention to, myself included, because sometimes I just, just can't be bothered, but you need to figure out what's working for you and what's not. Not what's working for some other career, it's what's working for you. Once you start posting, once you start posting things consistently and you start building an audience and you kind of have those interactions, figure out what is doing the best and what isn't doing so well. For example, on my TikTok, my like luxury vlogs, you could say, always do better. Me going to the hairdressers, me going to get my nails done. Those videos do so much better than a come with me to uni, day in the life of uni. That doesn't perform well on TikTok. But on YouTube, I can post a um, come with me to uni, a week in the life of a uni student, and it does really, really well. If it isn't working on one platform, that doesn't mean you can't post it. If you still want to film that content, film it. But like I said, it does well on YouTube. It didn't do well on TikTok. So I will take that video and I will post it on YouTube Shorts and that's where it will do well. You gotta take advantage of these things. Sometimes you get the one random one, like my OOTDs on my TikTok either do really, really well or really, really bad, and there's no in between. So I just kind of post them regularly because they're easy to film. But again, I'm still figuring out what works for me, you need to figure out what works for you, and you need to do that on every single platform. 
as well obviously this is a lot this is a lot of posting but this is where scheduling your posts and time management really comes in so like i said i work three days a week as a content creator for tiktok shop and in those three days i will have 20 videos to film for them edit them get them uploaded get them all done that's tuesday to thursday so on the monday i sit down and i spend three four hours just scheduling all my pinterest posts till sunday monday till sunday and then throughout the week i regularly go on pinterest i love pinterest i will find more pins and more ideas but i won't do anything with them yet i will just keep them to the side because i know monday is my pinterest scheduling day like i said tuesday wednesday thursday i'm working for this brand when i've finished my content for them or when i'm in a break or I'm on my lunch or I'm just kind of bored and I want to switch up a little bit I will work on content for myself say I've just finished editing a TikTok for them I will literally continue to edit TikToks for my account as well when I'm filming content for them I will film extra videos so that I can post some on my TikTok as well therefore it's not taken away from my content time today is Friday Friday is my YouTube filming day because I post on Sunday so Monday Pinterest Tuesday Wednesday Thursday is literally TikTok orientated. Friday is YouTube. As you can see, it's busy, it's chaotic, and it's a lot of emails and words and editing and like all that sort of stuff. So you just need to manage your time. You need to stay consistent and you need to stay dedicated because if you're not dedicated to it, it's not gonna grow because it's the sort of thing you're not always motivated for. It's 8.14 right now. I started filming this video at 7.45 in the morning, on a Friday morning. That's not where I pictured myself last night. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Yay. Going back to kind of what I said about uni tasker and working with brands, and I said accept the lower pay at first, just to build up that portfolio and that experience. You need to be practicing the important stuff. You need to learn how to edit videos, including YouTube videos, TikTok videos. You need to figure out how to post on Instagram. You need to know these platforms inside out you need to have a good eye create visually appealing content again you need to figure out what works so it's figuring out hooks in videos and seeing what drives traffic to your page but also makes them stay so you need to get good at the really like specific stuff editing visuals marketing and especially talking to a camera talking to a camera and doing voiceovers are the most awkward thing in the entire world like you won't see it because it's all edited out but in between each cut it's a bit strange, especially when you're doing voiceovers. I find voiceovers the most awkward thing. I've been filming content like this for so long, so I'm kind of comfy with it now, but sometimes it still does get a little bit awkward. So that's why you need to get good at these sorts of things, because obviously brands, if you want to work with brands, they want to hire people who are confident and can talk to a camera and can engage with an audience and are relatable so that, again, the audience stays. Do you see what I'm saying? They can have more sales, you can get more views, win-win so that's kind of all for social media as for how i work full-time like i said i do other jobs as well so that's where we come on to affiliate marketing which i would really recommend getting into it's gonna take a minute it's still taking me a minute i've literally just started maybe in the last like month or two i was doing stuff on tiktok shop before but i didn't actually know that was affiliate marketing affiliate marketing is basically when you promote a product or a service or a company or brand and every time you sell that or there's a sale or there's a click on the page you earn a commission you've probably seen on tiktok shop when you're scrolling and things come up it will say like commission paid it's because someone's clicked on that link they bought the product and that creator has earned a commission from that sale this can easily get you so rich because one viral video on tiktok of a creator posting, let's say like apple cider vinegar gummies, I think they have like two pound commission, let's say it's that. If they sell a hundred of those, 200 pounds, just off commission. Then when you get the really viral videos when people are making thousands of sales on one product, that's literally thousands of pounds on one video. Do you know how crazy that is? I do affiliate marketing on TikTok, but also on Pinterest. Pinterest is a great way to do it because there are 450 million Pinterest users every single day. That's one sixteenth of the entire planet every single day using Pinterest. For Pinterest, if you want to do affiliate marketing, I would say find a really specific niche, not like home decor or lifestyle, girly stuff. Like you need to be specific. Makeup, skincare, hair care, 
coffee. Musical instruments. Do you know what I mean? It needs to be so specific because that's the drive of traffic you're going to get to that page will be that specific group of people. And again, 450 million people a day. Even if 1% of people are interested in your niche, that is still 4.5 million per day. Day. So the more specific you are, the more you're going to narrow it down and you're going to get that drive of people, you're going to start to grow. And also there's a thing I think on Pinterest where if you have like over 200 followers, you can get monetized from Pinterest. That's really cool. By the way, all my socials are linked below if you do want to check me out. Just letting you know. But yeah, as a creator, you do kind of need to figure out other sources of income, especially when you're just starting. So if you have a part-time job on the side, don't be put off. I literally was a barista. I've got another part-time job right now. I act, I model. I actually want to be an actor. Social media was never my main goal, but right now it's just where I'm the most successful in my life. But yeah, I wanted to be an actor. So social media doesn't have to actually be forever. You have to believe in yourself and have confidence because that's one thing that's always going to come through the screen is whether you're sure of yourself or not and people only want to follow people that are sure of themselves so be sure of yourself even if you're not fake it till you make it i've got plenty of videos on confidence and advice which will be linked below i feel like i've spoken a lot and i really need a coffee if you want to know anything else please let me know below i hope this helped in some way shape or form again if you have any questions let me know i will answer them thank you guys for watching i really appreciate it and i will see you in my new flat so exciting! Wow.